the results for the first test on a new setup are in. Before I show you the results, let me show you the setup so that you have an understanding of how this is all kind of confabulated together. And if there's problems with the setup, uh, you know, let me know and you know, maybe we can fix it. But for now, I think I have this figured out. I hope this time. Let me show you what I have. Here's the setup. We have an ADS-B Exchange 1090 antenna feeding into this, uh, you know, all weather box. I have a hole in it that I made to feed the feed line through and a couple of network cables and the power cable. Don't worry, it's been dry. For the first portion of the test, this 1090 filter was not on. So it went from the antenna feed line to the power divider and then from the power divider to each SDR. That said, the power divider specs show that one port has less loss than the other. So the test ran for four days. I shut everything down. I swapped the cables around and I ran the test again for four days. Then after that, I did it all over again with the 1090 filter on. The idea being for four days, we have a baseline on either side and then we flip it around to make sure that whatever unbalance there is on loss gets uh, sorted out in terms of the power being delivered and the signal being delivered to each SDR. The SDRs are connected to Raspberry Pis with mega heat sink cases. That comes in handy because, you know, this thing sits outdoors and even though it is spring in the Midwest on a day like today, these are actually fairly warm. They're not hot to the point where I can't touch them, but they're certainly hot. For this test, we ran the NESDR Smart V5 and the Air Spy. And with that out of the way, let's look at some results. Let's look at some preliminary data just for giggles. I took the screenshot sometime after I started the test and we see that right out of the gate, the receiver on the left has 131.6 messages per second and the receiver on the right is getting 163.4 messages per second. One on the left is getting 32 aircraft with 26 with position and the one on the right has 31 aircraft with 27 with positions. And you see some of the aircraft listed here. Let's take a look at the data after four days of running my baseline system, which is the one that I run at home all the time, has 194 million total messages. Test one has 47.6 million and test two has 58.2 million. My baseline system is receiving 207 different aircraft over that time frame. Test one got 102 different aircraft over that time frame and test two received 111 test aircraft over that time frame. There are some things that are keeping test one and test two from getting anywhere close to this number from my baseline. And that is a, they're on a power splitter and that power splitter has three point some odd, maybe, you know, close to four dB of attenuation. So at the very least, just over half the power is being lost. In addition to that, this system is set up on the roof of my garage. The test system is set up on top of a box that I have outside for holding gardening stuff. So the antenna is not as well exposed to the world. And you're gonna ask, well, why didn't I put the test systems on the roof? Well, this baseline doesn't matter as much to me and that baseline runs on Wi-Fi. I wanted to get as accurate a reading as possible from these two tests and therefore they're connected to the network and they are physically wired into the network so that there are no drop packets. I had run, as you can see, uh, test one over Wi-Fi and test two over Wi-Fi uh, for a test and the, there's a disparity there that comes from the wireless network dropping packets. These are UDP packets, so they don't get retransmitted. And since I wanted accurate data for the test, I opted to have them wired in and because they're wired in, I don't want to run wires to the roof of my garage. Now let's look at this data after adding the 1090 filter to the setup. Again, my baseline has 209,000, tracked 180 different aircraft. Test one has 58 million, 58.3 million contacts or messages, I should say, 98 individual aircraft, 71 million messages, and 103 distinct aircraft. Let's load this up into a spreadsheet and show you some comparative numbers. The results are in. Here we have the spreadsheet with the results. Let's take it down through the numbers. Without the 1090 filter, ADSV test one got 
47.6 million messages. ADSV Test 2 got 58.2 million messages. Net difference being 10.6 million messages, making ADSB Test 1 81% as efficient as ADSB Test 2, or making ADSB Test 2 22.3% better than ADSB Test 1, depending on how you want to look at it, right? Then we add the 1090 filter. 58.3 million messages for ADSB Test 1, 71 million messages for ADSB Test 2, for a net difference of 12.6 million messages, thereby making ADSB Test 1 82% as good as ADSB Test 1, or making ADSB Test 2 21% better, 21.7% better than ADSB Test 1. Keep in mind that the numbers difference here could be that the filter is helping, and it could be that there was more air traffic over those four days and therefore more messages. The key number is here, the key numbers here are the differences in, in number of messages received and in the percentage that they represent. Drum roll, please. What's the ADSB test two? The Air Spy. That actually caught me by surprise because the Air Spy on initial testing for me was less efficient than the new Elec NESDRV5, but that was when I was using the T to split the signal as opposed to using this RF power splitter. So there's something to this. I'm gonna run the rest of the tests uh, and you know bring you guys videos about it. We'll see which USB-based software-defined receiver reigns supreme, but for now, the crown seems to have been taken away by the Air Spy. A huge thanks to Mike T, who saw the series and was interested to know what in the world uh, the one that I was considering getting and wasn't sure if I was gonna get would be. He sent me the money for buying the Air Spy and said, hey, get that Air Spy and, and put it on the test. And if not, use it for whatever you deem useful. And you know, thanks for the great content. Mike, thank you so much for uh, doing this. I don't think I would have bought it otherwise. It's, uh, it seems that it was definitely worth putting on the, on the bench here. The rest of the tests will tell the tale for sure, but as of right now, it seems as though the Air Spy seems to be the receiver to get for doing ADSB. That's all I got on this one, folks. Catch you on the next one, 7-3.